All right, how about some breaking news in free agency? Yes, after part of about six, seven years with the Yankees, former closer Aroldis Chapman is moving on to Bluer Pastures. Yes, Bluer Pastures. He's staying in the American League, but signing with the Kansas City Royals, per Mark Fines. And this is also on MLBTradeRumors.com. The details of the contract are not out yet, but he's heading to Kansas City to a uh, much lower pressure market. And maybe he'll bring some value to that bullpen. So they're an up and coming team. They have a lot of young talent, and we'll see what they do there. But officially saying goodbye to Oroldo Chapman and good luck to you in Kansas City. And uh, it just shows the Yankees are moving on from uh, one of the most expensive uh, relief pitchers ever to toe the, to <laughs> toe the diamond. So, um, but with that said, speaking of those ridiculous salaries, I want to I want to share with you some perspective here. The the baseball uh, high salary teams like the Dodgers, the Phillies, the the Red Sox, the Yankees, a couple others, Phillies and 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 Mets. They're paying almost $80 million in penalties, luxury tax penalties, after 2022. That number is going to go up this year because there's, there's going to be multiple repeat offenders. Um, but I wanted to give you some perspective. AP just put out an article, and the Dodgers were the first repeat offender. So they're paying about $32 million in luxury tax penalties for 2022. Okay, um, And all these penalties have to be paid by this Friday in full. So... That's a lot of money. They're repeat offenders. They pay. They paid a little under, I think, thirty-one the year prior to that. But they had some of the highest salaries, and they had the highest salary at like two hundred ninety-seven million or payroll. The Mets exceeded that in their first year last year, and under Steve Cohen with two ninety-nine. The Mets had never paid any threshold level penalties or whatnot, and they just shot up from the bottom all the way to the top tier threshold. Remember, the threshold level is now two thirty-three, two fifty-three, two seventy-three, and two ninety-three. And two ninety-three is the Cohen threshold. Okay, that's what it's affectionately known as. Um, so they went right to the top, and they're exceeding that by almost $100 million this year. So they're going to be repeat offenders on steroids. So they're paying about $30 million. And let me give you the numbers here, um, which is crazy. And again, the Dodgers paid $32 million last year. They're paying thirty two point four this year. Um, and then Trevor Bauer kind of for a ton of that money. The Mets themselves, with these ridiculous salaries, are paying thirty, like thirty thirty point eight million. And luxury tax penalties that's going to go way up after next year. The Yankees are paying 9.7 after 2020, uh, 2022. And there was a first time offender this year, going to be a repeat offender as well, up another couple of thresholds. Um, uh, so who knows? That's going to be up in double digits, no doubt. The Padres are paying a million and a half, the Red Sox, 1.2 million, and the Phillies, 1.9 million. So that's those are the teams that are paying. Luxury tax money, and this is the thing. This is the problem I have. There's only five teams there that they're paying this stuff. And what I don't like about that is there's a lot of you know. I, it's good that they have those higher threshold you know penalties and whatnot, and teams that are actually spending. But why do those teams have to give revenue sharing money to the teams down below who won't spend their money? And why is there no requirement? And I've said this before. Why are those teams down below who get the revenue sharing money not required to spend that money on players to make the team better? That's not fair. That's not fair. So this is almost $80 million. And, and baseball itself made about $4.5 billion in revenue, which is almost half a billion higher than the year prior. So that's where I have a problem. I think there should be a minimum or th- uh, increasing threshold to get minimum payrolls up to maybe $100 million after a couple years. Require teams to do that. Otherwise, they have to forfeit compensatory picks, draft picks, or something. International signing money. They gotta, they, I mean, if the teams at the top who spend get penalized? What about the teams at the bottom who can spend and have this money allocated, but they're pocketing the money? That's not fair. It's not fair. And again, the Yankees are going to be repeat defenders next year. But again, keep in mind one of the most important things. What their payroll is in the beginning of the season does not matter. Mid-season does not matter. It matters what it finishes at towards the end of the season. That's where all these numbers get calculated in terms of how much they're going to pay based on penalties and, and, and whatnot else. So, um, that's, those are the numbers that really, really matter. But these are the teams that are paying luxury tax threshold uh, penalties for 2022. Again, the numbers are probably going to go up with some significantly increased payrolls, but still a small handful of teams. We need more teams to spend, all right? And again, it, 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 it's a way imbalanced competitive landscape, and it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. This is why there's so many complaints that the Yankees not spending. I mean, you know, there's only one team that's over the threshold. It's the Mets right now. But it's, I, you know, I hear from a lot of people saying, well, the Yankees don't want to win as much if they spend. That spending over the threshold doesn't guarantee anything it was the Mets were clear evidence of that last year they they got punked in the playoffs by the Padres punked so spending doesn't guarantee and again we've had this like the Yankees have spent time and time again over the years 
They've had high payrolls, and you've only won World Series in the last one championship in the last 13 years. So it just goes to show you that it's more than spending. It's being healthy. It's getting the right players. See, it's a lot of different things, okay? People can trash Cashman all they want or trash. It doesn't matter. Okay, well, the Red Sox, won't, well, they have four different GMs. So, and yet, Cashman's tra uh, track record is longer because he's the only GM that's, that's been here for 25 years. Nobody's been a GM for a team that long, so it's really hard to compare track records with his. So it's just, it is what it is. He's going to have clunkers and he's going to have good stuff. But that said, the spending is the spending. Uh, you know, a lot of the, if you look at the champ World Series championships over the past decade, half of them are, 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 you know, are on teams that haven't been at the very, very top of the payroll threshold. So it happens with both. It happens with both. But again, those are the penalty thresholds. That's what's being paid out this year by a handful of teams. And again, it's generally the same teams that are up there investing the money all the time. So, and they generally spend a lot of time in the playoffs. Yeah. And most frequently, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the Astros aren't up there. So it's just it. It's just the reality. And it's player development. It's a lot of things. It's a raise, player development. So it's a combination of things. But I rolled this Chapman to the raise. I mean, to the raise, to the Royals. And numbers of the, uh, of the threshold levels. And let me know what you think of both of these. Happy? Surprised? Um, what do you think? I mean, do you agree with me at all that teams at the top should not be giving revenue sharing to the teams at the bottom who don't spend it, who just pocket the money? That's not fair to teams like the Mets and the Yankees and the Red Sox and all those other teams, the Phillies and the Dodgers. Like, it's not fair they have to give away their profits to teams that are just pocket it. It's not fair. That could be used on payroll and investing more players, but... You know, these are the types of things that, and these penalties are getting crazy now. So, um, <laughs> there's another reason why teams are spent to a certain level and then they won't go any further. So, much to the frustration of a lot of fans, I totally get that too. But it doesn't mean they're not committed to winning either. You don't have to spend $250 million to win the championship. Um, but it's, it's kind of heading in that direction now, unfortunately. But be sure to subscribe to the channel again if you haven't done that yet. And if you do, just hit the like button and the notification bell as well. That way you don't miss anything. You know, it's my commitment to you to put out good content that you find valuable and informative and enjoyable. I'm going to continue to do that during the season, breaking news, trades for agency, off-season, preseason, spring training, the works, the whole gamut. So I hope that you do that before we leave if you haven't done that yet. So, but have a good day, everybody. Anything that else that comes out, you know you're going to get it. And by the way, I'll put the details of Aroldis Chapman's contract in the description of this video. Talk to you next time.